Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are taking a look at the entries for the Mobile Asteroid Mining Barge Challenge. So this was a challenge hosted in the Lunar Colony Discord server, link will be in the description. And the contestants were challenged with creating a mobile asteroid mining barge for the TFK. So it doesn't have to be TFK style, it was just simply a way to put, I guess, the Trinity Law into the challenge with the idea of TFK buying these mining barges to harvest ore. So people will be judged on it being self-sufficient, so these need to be able to take care of themselves fully, that means refining capabilities, they need to be able to refuel themselves and basically maintain themselves. Um, being mobile, so <laughs> it needs to be able to move, um, pretty simple one. Um, and then the ability to basically harvest asteroids, so basically hopping from asteroid to asteroid, harvesting the ores and then delivering them back to the base or you know, I guess the base of operations. Um, this can be done in whatever way people want to do. I gave an example of a, a mobile platform with a fleet of AI controlled mining drones where you pull up to an asteroid, you clamp on, you deploy the drones with the, the PAM script or whatever you want to use, they harvest all the ore, bring it back and then you move on to the next one. Um, but you can put drills on it, you could do whatever. So there is a range of entries for this challenge and there are prizes for the winners. So I'm going to go through the contestants one by one. These are my first impressions of the ships. Just to go through a little bit of a walk around, see what they're like, give my thoughts. And then at the end, we'll summarize and come up with the winners. So number one, I've got four at a time here because... Um, you know, cost of living crisis and all that, and I can't afford to upgrade my PC, so, you know, please like and subscribe, it massively helps. Um, the first one is the Shield Class Mining Barge by Bot11. Designed for the LKFN, a low effort mining barge with a streamlined launch vehicle attached, the Shield is capable of mining asteroids, ferrying cargo over great distances, or mass movement of cargo into and out of gravity wells using the attached launch vehicle. It has many refineries on board, along with massive cargo space and four jump drives. So this is the shield class, let's have a look, look here, so starting with the exterior, looks like we've got a long fixed drill arm at the front here, so this is going to basically just use the whole ship to mine the asteroid by the looks of things, which is, again, totally fine. Um, and then we've also got a separate launch vehicle down here, which is cool. I do like this idea, um, it reminds me of like, I don't know, KSP-esque builds, looks like it's got plenty of hydrogen thrust. I'm guessing it's a stack ship as well because the landing gear is on the bottom. It's not a stack ship, but the landing gear is on the bottom. Have a little mooch around here real quick. We've got a bit of an airlock, a few windows, got cargo containers, and not much else. Not too sure how you actually get into the cockpit of this thing, to be honest. Maybe we go down the front. Huh? How do we fly it? That's the million dollar question. Maybe it's a drone. Or maybe I'm blind. There's got to be a cockpit on this somewhere, right? No? Aha, there's a control seat. Uh, show on hood. All right, what are you? Show yourself. It's not showing up. I've got no idea how you get into this thing. But yeah, anyway, there's the launch vehicle. Maybe it's up top. I don't know, I've checked all the uh, all the usual spots. I'm thinking it might be referencing the control seat on the actual ship. So got a load of spotlights under here, so a bit of a dry dock. And then yeah, we've got a merge block with a piston connector set up, which is always nice to see. It means it's quite adaptable to different uh, docking ports. It's a nice armor coverage, and that is a full hydrogen-powered vessel. We've got some pretty tasty armaments for a, uh, a mining vessel. We've got assault cannons at the rear here. Got point defense in front of the bridge, which is useful. You could also use it for shooting stray asteroids, I guess. Powered by large reactors. Plenty of refineries, plenty of storage space. You're not going to have a problem at all. And obviously, you can use the, the launch vehicle to go back and forth. Um, delivering cargo sort of as needed. A lot of walkways here, which is very reminiscent of, you know, an asteroid mining vessel. 
which is nice to see. Let's see if we can sneak in here. Got an airlock at the aft side of the ship. Got a stairwell leading up to the bridge. Bit cramped, but it works. There's the control seat. You got a decent view out of there, but nothing, uh, nothing spectacular. Come downstairs, and then you've got access to all the uh, the cargo ports and things like that. So let's check what we got. A lot of assault cannon turrets. A lot of refineries. Looks like it's only got the survival kit for production, but it does have that launch vehicle, so that's fine. A couple of antennas, nice little stack there. And there you have it. There's the uh, the shield class. Next up, we have the Scoria class mining barge by Allied Armor. So this is a nice little ring design here, so we'll just bring this up. Scoria class is a multi-purpose mining barge designed to be efficient and self-sustaining. It comes lightly armed with four Gatling turrets for defence, as well as eight additional hard points. Nice, I like it when people do that. It is also capable of holding up to four mining craft, one repair craft, and can support a fleet as a repair and refuel ship with its ten large cargo containers, six refineries, and two assemblers, all fully upgraded. Lovely. Got a little bit of lore here, which I'm not going to read through just yet. Uh, big thank you for Omega allowing me to use the ONRC colours for the ship. So this is an ONRC inspired vessel, I'm guessing, which is Omega's faction, where he likes to put rings on everything. It's alright, he doesn't watch the video, so he won't hear that. Um, awesome, we've got these nice mines. I like these tri-barreled drill arms here. And also notice these one-by-one -one wheels, which act as like bumpers. I mean, if you slam into an asteroid, they'll, they'll bounce right off. Because physics. Space engineers physics, specifically. These look really cool. Okay. Nice. Got another docking port there. As mentioned, we've got the Gatling guns dotted around. Nice use of the, uh, the, the shape of the spherical tanks there. We have a welding and grinding ship up top, so the ship can keep itself going. Make any repairs that need to be done. Got this big ass ring. I don't know if you can uh, go into it or anything like that. I don't think you can. But uh, I guess it looks cool. Nice little thruster array at the rear. Again, another hydrogen powered ship. Nice bit of greeble there as well with the passageways. Very detailed. I like it. Got a, an array of sorters going on up top as well. Got a lot of, oh, there's an iron thruster there. Got a lot of <laughs> large cargo containers, so you will be fine for storage. Got an underslung bridge. Let's head inside. Got a little ladder section here so you can get up top. Always nice to see. Come in through the airlock, um, and then we've got ladders going down. Make sure I'm not missing any levels here. And we're down into the main living area. So you've got two control seats, desk, survival kit. Got some beds here. Nice setup for the beds actually, and you can actually come behind the ladders. You've got a rear facing window and basically all the living goodies you need. Just give me a sec. <laughs> Just in case you need to have a shower or have a little rest, I guess. Nice, very um, compact interior, I like it. And then you've actually got another airlock here in case you want to get to the bridge a bit quicker. There are a few ion thrusters I missed actually, so this is Probably more of a hybrid vessel. Um, pr well, I mean, on the whole, I think I love the detail on it. We've got spotlights, large car containers, refineries, assemblers. It's got a ship that can basically repair and make any upgrades as needed. Um, you've got the solar panels on top as well, and the mining ships docked to the side. So this is, for all intents and purposes, you're going to pull up to a an asteroid, deploy the miners. Um, obviously, you can carry more than just those two and harvest the asteroid and then move on to the next thing and it can also be used as you mentioned as a support vessel for the fleet so nice multi-purpose ship absolutely nailed it with the greeble someone's been taking notes from mr omega or maybe omega's been taking notes from you um and the small craft are all absolutely beautiful as well i'll just give you a quick overview here of this repair craft here large ion in uh, every single direction actually so that thing's going to move quite nicely and not take up too much power. And then as I mentioned, these are just a wet dream of mining vessels. They look awesome. Really strong work. Really strong work. Awesome. Next up, we have the Rockhound class by the final event 97. 
So, let's pull it up. Entry for the Lunar Colony Astrobot Challenge. 900,000 litres of cargo storage with an additional million litres from drill storage. 44 drills can fit through the hole in mines with normal drilling. So this is basically a large bore mining ship, as you can see from the front here. Vast array of drills, and this is actually, by the looks of things, an ion-only ship. So at least it's not going to consume any fuel. And it doesn't need to move too quickly because obviously it is a mining vessel. It's industrial. It's got two gats for defense anyway, which is nice to see. Um, and then again, that very flat profile so it can slip through. It's, don't take it out of context. Never mind, I'm going to stop there. Um, we've got the bridge up top, and then we've got the entrance at the rear along with a connector. Bridge. I can confirm this is indeed. And bridge. Sweet! Um, I think that's all she wrote. Let's have a little look then. Oh, hang on a minute. What's going on here? We got a little bit more. We've got a passageway and a ladder shaft into cargo storage. Along with a bit of an engineering section here, you've got jump drives, refinery module access. So, nice little passageways we always love a passageway so if you want to swap these out i guess you can you can chop and change them for whatever modules you prefer on your ships i suppose and everyone's got their own preferences reactor and conveyor access sweet as a nut right what have we got got refineries yeah got assemblers okay obviously we've got the jump drive um okay nice so this is actually a really good sort of one-player mining barge. You know, if you don't want to faff around with drones and the likes, um, you can take this out and quite happily just sort of chew through asteroids uh, as and when you please. So, yeah, solid entry. Nice work. Moving on to the next vessel. We have the Harvestman ACP by Metromania? Metrovania. I don't know. I can't read my handwriting. Metrovania. So this is a pretty uh, a pretty tasty ship. The Harvest Man is a piece of mining equipment of unknown origin. The original was discovered by an expeditionary force when an asteroid thought to be of extragalactic origin passed through the sector of the galaxy. Attached to the asteroid in partial states of disrepair were eight ACP units. The mining rigs were in the process of mining a gold deposit within the asteroid. But an unknown force seemingly ripped open the command seats of all eight mecha, leaving no trace of the pilots. And there's, there's a lot of lore here, so... How to use. Attach yourself to a target asteroid with the anchor piston magnets. Launch both extending drill arms by aiming with both custom turrets and extending each one into the targeted area. The arms will extend at safe speed and retract once fully extended. The script will realign them to the default orientations. Wow. Okay. This looks awesome. I love the styling on this. It really gives that a uh, unique the vibe of something you, you just find and you just think, what the hell is that? So we've got a, a hybrid propulsion system here. We have got a large iron thruster in the rear, along with a lot of large hydro thrusters, so this thing can move around pretty quickly. Um, and then you've got these, well, you've got the clamps first, and then you've got these extendable piston drill arms, which we love to see. has a few interior turrets dotted around. We've got a Gatling turret on top. Nice little smokestack for show as well. So I guess it's like sort of steampunk style, uh, in a way. Got the refineries on show up here. Got a bit of a camera and some greeble looking nice. Um, and yeah, I believe the entrance, or well, the cockpit is just down here actually for this one. So there's no sort of interior. Just jump in the cockpit. Uh, and there you have it. Just show you one of these arms working here. All the ships will be in the description, by the way, so if you want to go check them out, you can do. Very nice. What do we have on board? We've got two refineries and two assemblers. Does it have an O2 gen? It does. So this can, this thing can uh, literally take care of itself. Mine until it's full and then RTB. And there's the, uh, the retracting of the drill arms. 
nicely set up on the scripts there. Lovely. Strong work. I really like this one. Um, yeah, I mean, it does everything you need it to do. It's got the refineries, O2 gens, like I said, so it's, it is fully sufficient. Um, Self-sufficient. And, yeah, would be a really good ship just to take out on a spin, do a bit of a mining run and come back to base with a, uh, a boatload of ores. So, yeah, well, it'd be ingots, actually. Thank you guys for these entries. We're now going to move on to the next four. Next up, we have the Firmino class, or the Firmino class, built by Theodore. I'm not quite sure how you say it. After being ambushed by pirates on most of their mining facilities, TFK decided to get help and hired TFM Industries to build an asteroid mining barge that can defend itself against most pirate attacks, and so the TFM asteroid mining barge was created. But TFM. Engineers could do better. The first model was ion only, but the Mark II added hydrogen thrust to the mix. It has become a hybrid ship that can't fly in atmosphere, but it works. <laughs> I sure hope it works. So this is a, a nice little compact one. Uh, we've got a very, uh, I guess, economy era style. Um, just, just ignore that for now. Um, a very economy era style sort of body and frame going on. We've got a jump drive back here. We've got a, an asymmetric Gatling gun. Um, and I guess that's, well, we've got the interior turret on the top, but that's its main large grid armament by the looks of things. So, yeah, it can probably hold its own against a couple of drones, but it, you know, it will take some serious, some serious damage. Um, your best option is probably still to run away. Um, I guess this is its mining capability up front. We've got eight drills on either side, so this probably can't bore mine. Um, but you'd be pretty good for just sort of skimming the surface of asteroids and getting any of those visible ore patches. Got a bridge in the front. I can already tell it's got a pretty nice interior. Uh, as mentioned, it's hybrid thrust. It has the TFK colour scheme as well, which is nice. And you've got a clamp here if you want to, I guess, lock onto an asteroid. Got some refineries exposed um, on the side. Nice little bit of greeble there. Um, and then we've got an antenna array up top along with some solar panels as well. So, yeah, it could probably look after itself for a good little while. Obviously, it can refuel itself, provided it has an O2 generator. Cool. So, we have a proper airlock with a vent inside. Would have liked to see, have seen a, but, a button panel in here, but that'll do. We've got... Yeah, this is a lovely interior. So, you're coming through the airlock, you've got a main hallway down to the bridge. We've got the room with the jump drive, survival kit, and an interior turret as well. Got reactor access there, that is hand loaded, it's not actually hooked up, which is fine. Uh, we've got a little living quarter space in here, window, desk, you got a bed, a little plushie in there, you got your Alexa or whatever you want to call it, um, you got your shower, you got your toilet, and a little armory as well. So nice, livable quarters in here. Heading down the hallway towards the bridge, we've got full block air vent, which is nice to see. We've got a cryopod in here. And we've got access to the cargo system on the ship too. Connector is at the rear. So yeah, this is a nice... This is like a, a good option for survival. If you're playing solo survival, this is a good option for you. Let's just check if there are O2 generators. There are. And there's a basic assembler, which should be fine. So you've got basic assembly, you've got full refineries, and you've also got O2 generators. As well as some light defense. So... Yeah, overall, this is, you know, like I said, probably one of the better options if you're building a solo survival ship. Uh, this will do you nicely. And obviously, you can fly on all ion if needed, too. Just going to remove it because my PC is taking an hit. Uh, this thing has moved around. You know, I might just have to respawn it because, yeah, whatever. Um, next up, we have the cow, chan the cow Chain class. I've got no idea how you say this. Uh, it was built by Spa2. Uh, the Kaushan class? Maybe it's Kaushan. I don't know. I, don't, I honestly don't know. The TFK Custom Edition is a visually modified version of the Kaushan class mining barge. Please don't keep making me say it. With the Kaushan, who needs a base? He made me say it again. And there it is again. It is an all-in-one mining vessel capable of scouting out mining, processing, and storing bulk volumes of resources. Its unique central hull section allows engineers to... Sim engineers to substitute the existing fully upgraded refinery for a reduced vessel length and single simple refinery. Due to the semi-prolonged outings of these vessels, each class comes with a pressurized interior, flush with medical facilities, washroom, light armory, and airlock. 
full of stone, worry no longer. In addition to the primary collector and underside docking port, it also features an inbuilt ejection tubes for raw stone and process gravel so you won't be wasting space. Following CEC corporate standards, the ship runs purely on hydrogen and is designed to be constructed entirely out of lower end materials, allowing easy, allowing easy planet side construction and subsequent launch into orbit. A vital selling point. Sweet! So this is an easy to build ship. I mean, you can tell straight away, it looks like a bore miner. Uh, very Spartu-esque, I have to say. It's got the TFK insignia on the side. Looks like we've got some very light armaments in the form of interior turrets, which are probably just going to uh, keep you from asteroid men for asteroid men hydrogen men for the most part got landing clamps large cargo as discussed you can basically remove this section to make it smaller if needed um, and then you've got the drill array up front also the cockpit is there so you can just jump straight in spotlights on the sides it's always nice to see I'm gonna have to remove that because it's causing me lag as well um, should have hashtag should have put PCU limit on um, we've got engines up top Alright guys, we're back. I really don't know what happened there. Um, but anyway, yes, we were having a little look around the class. The, the, the game just started like lagging out. Uh, we've got docking ports there, and then obviously the refiner on the other side. As mentioned, flies on full hydrogen. So let's little, take a little peek. We've got these port doors, and I am bugging out right now. Hang on. Oh my lord! What is going on? So we've got a little window, we've got access to the storage system, we've got one of these little new crates, uh, and then there's a little area upstairs, you can see the window, which we'll head up there in just a second. Got the automatic airlock script by looks of things. Got the survival kit, oh god. Survival kit, access to the cockpit, you've got the airlock script block, passage block with a light, and then you've got the toilet as well. So this is another great option if you're playing solo survival. This one's even cheaper to build because it's all hydrogen. Um, you're just going to have to mine a bit more ice to keep yourself powered. And struggle immensely with the airlocks. This is the number one reason why I don't use a script anymore. Um, but yeah. We'll give it one last go. That was the Cow Cowchen class. Oh, why'd you do this to me? Right. Next up, we have the ISI drill base, or the Inari drill base, which, as far as I can tell, is a four-wheel rolling propaganda piece, and I'm probably going to regret putting this on YouTube, but let's go and have a little look around. Dear Lord. <laughs> <coughs> the pinnacle of mining tech, the ISI drill base designed for one purpose and one purpose only, to collect rots and spit out ships, featuring everything a base will ever need in terms of refining, assembling, printing and mining. It's only temporary, don't worry about it, seals, liar, the peak of engineering, the gods will weep upon witnessing this man-made horror, the, <laughs> the, sh the shag shack welcomes all, truly a base of all time, may the lord have mercy on your soul if you try and explore this absolute maze and uncover the secrets within. By cute seals too. So, up front, we have the drill arm with a massive walkway. We have a giant hologram of what I'm assuming is the faction logo. We have, for reasons that I cannot fathom, <laughs> a rotating connector docking arm. It has a spoiler. <laughs> what do Americans call it? A wing? I don't know what Americans call it. Um, we have a cow. That is also spinning. And a <laughs> couch on the bottom. And we have obviously the wheels and a long arm going up to the top. Where we have many, many cargo containers and hydrogen tanks. We have portable large grid miners in the rear as well. Which can be deployed. Don't know how successful these things would be flying on atmosphere. But there you go. You've got hydrogen boosters at the back. Uh, so this thing can also fly in space, which is pretty scary of a thought to have. Big walkway up top, um, a vast amount of assemblers and refineries. Over here is a ship printer, so it is quite practical. Various large uh, hydrogen thrusters dotted throughout. Got the Inari bar, <laughs> cope, 
Um, and then we've got some more propaganda <laughs> up top. Right, let's try and find... Okay, Greeble. Literally, Greeble. We've got a spinning projector. Right, the Pack 2 Enclave. Inside we've got... Oh my god! Why does it do that? Okay, inside we've got... Uh, right, no, okay, no, this needs to stop. Hang on. No, stop! They've changed the name! Oh my god, make it stop! Oh. Jesus. My ears. Right, we've got flashing lights just to induce a little bit more epilepsy. A weird graphical glitch going on down there. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, and then we've got the toilet. This is just... Oh my god. What a mess. Right, we come outside. Um, we've got Woody's Shag Shack. Where there's a... Uh, oh, I'm guessing this doesn't have the best intentions for this doll. Uh, we've got a bed and a lavatory and that's basically it. We have actually have a component list. <laughs> Remember to remove before publishing. We've got the Inari Bar. Home of Sexual Food Bar. Ugh. Tunes. I don't want any more tunes, please. Okay, we've got couches, plants, an air vent, and living quarters down here. We've also got... Oh, for God's sake. Right, we've also got the bridge, which I'm guessing is the main control section. Um, climb the computer. <laughs> um, we've got a passageway leading downstairs, where you've got a desk as, as well as other things. I don't even know what to say. We're just going to move on to the next one. Alright, next up we have the How Much Do You Hate Your Computer, also, now, uh, also known as the Australis Mining Barge by Mystic Linjam, also known as just Mystic. A modular cargo system with four modules to choose from. Cargo module adds eight large cargo containers, so you've got various modules here to adapt and sort of upgrade the ship. Uh, you've got a little tutorial on how to use, and then we've got some credits for scripts. A lot of different moving parts going on here. So this is a mining barge which uses the drones. So as I sort of gave an example of like a drone miner, this is exactly that. Uh, so we've got an array of drones here. These are all bore mining drones. Hydrogen powered as you can see, clamped along the side here. So this is very much fly up to an asteroid, deploy the drones and harvest it style, which I like. I really like that. Um, it also has that very rugged industrial look. Lots of beams and supports. Um, even got what looks like a fake cargo container there got actual cargo storage over here and plenty of it at that we've got hydrogen storage we've got a few gatling turrets dotted across it for defense as well which is helpful uh, this thing would be pretty fragile if it was to be attacked so it's good to have some uh, some defense large rear hydrogen thruster array you've got the bridge up top a bit like a i guess sort of us carrier style um many things besides. So we've got a docking arm there, we've got some gate doors which will inevitably pop inside and find out what they're for in a second. So we enter the airlock, we come up top, we've got a zero G zone up here, so this is the, the airlock room. Very nice detailed interior, we'll head aft first. So this is engineering, utility hangar, and then forward is the cargo airlock. So we've got component storage in here, which is nice to see, as well as a ladder shaft. So lots of shelves and other sort of machinery going on in here. This is really nice, actually. Got a panel. Always like a panel. Um, and then we've got a staircase, which is actually the refinery staircase, which is built in very nicely. We've got a tug. We love a tug. We've got a tug vessel in here. This is actually an ion tug. <laughs> so we have an ion tug vessel stored in here and this is what you can obviously deploy with the big red button. I like those spotlights. That's cool. I've not seen that before. 
Didn't know you could build directly on the cockpit, but maybe it's hooked up up top. No? Okay. Fair enough. Um, and other various bits of greeble. Got a bit of small grid action going on up here as well to accommodate for the connector. We head back up top. This will take you down to the ship. If we go up. I'm guessing this is an airlock. Oh, no, we've got more going on in here. More interior space. Windows and crew quarters. So you can see outside on the ship. And then if we go up here, you've got the bathroom. Little living area. You've got a medical station. This is where you'd eat. Have a little coffee. Chill out. No tracks available, thank God. Um, and then if we head up here, we've got another section, which is a bit hard to get to. But this is like the, I guess, the control room. Um, and then you've got the, the flight seat for the bridge up there. Well, this is cool. Lots of, lots of like server, server room style vibes and machinery going on. Very bridge-esque. Then you've got the helm, the control seat in front of it as well. So it's a nice bridge. You've got very good visibility as well if you come down here. You can see pretty much everything you need to. Um, especially these, these pipes. Oh yeah. Gotta get a view on those pipes. So let's head back down and see if there's any more interior works on the other side. Let me out. So if we head back down. And then we'll go onto the starboard side if we can. We've got the engine room down here. Or an engine room. Got doors seemingly just opening and shutting. Um, and then this actually brings us back into the, the airlock section. Uh, if we go forward, loads of little cargo storage spaces. Nice hazard skin applied there as well. Very good greeble throughout. Really does give those vibes of like an industrial mining barge, which is nice to see. And then this takes us out back into the fray. Awesome. I really like this one. This this is a good, like a very good example um, of an asteroid harvester. Um, I'm guessing this is to build more drones. Let's see if we can fire it up. I have an erection. That was cool. So you can produce more mining drones there as well, which is literally perfect. Oh, <laughs> okay. No, I'm sold. I'm sold. Uh, I think this thing is really cool. Definitely uh, a strong contender. Awesome. Right, well, that's the, the Australis by Mystic. Very strong work. Really like it. And let's move on to the next entry. Alright, so next up we have the Emergence by Flinter Galactic. So let's have a quick look at this. As the war with LKF came to its conclusion, and safely behind REC lines, TFK began to rebuild its crippled industry. The relentless onslaught of LKF and inability to replace ships left TFK command with a single cruiser and a handful of civilian transport after the battle over Providence and sacrifice of Starfall. Contact... Contracting a nearby REC shipyard, TFK began to design its fleet from the ground up. At the time the emergence was designed and constructed, TFK fleet power was still extremely limited, leading to multiple retrofrits, providing it with basic point defence grid to scare off any would-be attackers. TFK resources still being extremely stretched, the barge lacked many advanced subsystems such as reactors and jump drives. It is equipped with newly designed trimmer class miners inside the frontal hangar. It, alongside sister ships, began providing ore for both TFK and nearby REC shipyards and outposts, helping to support the defence against LKF attackers on REC. Excellent knowledge of the law. Uh, the Emergence is a medium-sized harvester designed to operate alone, using small mining vessels to gather ore and refining it on board. It has a small point defence turret network and has many exposed systems, leading it to be quite vulnerable. It has a hangar that can store three small miners, 
and exterior docking to easily transfer resources between the two. Large refining, assembling and gas production facilities has been installed, allowing it to work independently for long periods of time. Overall, the Emergence is a reliable, if vulnerable ship, allowing for resource, resources gathering and refining operations to happen smoothly. Got a few stats here. Fantastic. Excellent demonstration of lore knowledge there, and this does indeed look like a TFK ship, uh, which wasn't actually one of the criteria, but nevertheless looks absolutely beautiful. Very reminiscent of the TFK style. Love it. Um, obviously we've got the yellow paint job and as mentioned we have a basic point defense grid so this is to be honest with you this is bang on something the TFK would build and it makes sense from a law perspective as well um, we've got the bridge at the front which is I guess RECS-esque um, and then we've got a few windows got hydrogen tanks hydrogen thrusts looks like there's a bit of a battery slash antenna array up top again very TFK reminiscent as mentioned in the description, we've got various systems exposed, which, again, is one of the hallmarks that people point out about the Trinity ships, but that is a feature. Um, and then we've got the magnetic plates on the bottom. Very, very nice looking ship. It has to be said, this thing is beautiful. It does look very much like a TFK ship. Um, so we're heading through the front. We've got a hangar, along with these three mining ships here, which are really, really cool, actually. I like the, the truck cockpit very compact mining vessels as well um, so you'd have to launch them one at a time we've got a few bits of greeble going on in the hangar here as well as viewports viewports my beloved uh, a bit of damage here um, not sure what that would be from maybe the thrusters on the miners but these things look awesome very nice got an airlock here with a window where you can just see slightly inside um, and I believe that's for pressurization Oh, that's the hangar doors. Whoa! Something went wrong there. Right, anyway, we'll head inside. So, inside we have a nice little hallway here, various doors. We've got a vending machine, crew cabins here. More crew cabins. I'm guessing this is further. Yep, so we've got plenty of crew storage here. We've got a bathroom. We head up top, we've got more, we've got another hallway, we've got another toilet, so this is a well thought out interior, lots of crew space, this could support a very large crew, they just have to share a toilet. Uh, we've got the medical room, we've got some cryopods here, medical bays, and then obviously the big medical room as well. We head backwards and up the stairs, we have a further hallway. This is absolutely gorgeous. We've got loads of uh, armories going on here. We've got another sort of, I guess, hydrogen access passageway here, along with some shelving units for storage. And then this brings us back into the corridor. Uh, we'll head aft initially. Back here, we've got access to some of the machinery components and some storage. Then on the other side over here, we have like what looks like a little... Uh, Recreation room where you sort of chill out and watch propaganda. And further back, we have some more greeble going on. Looks like an engineering room where you've got a few control seats for the engines. So power generation, and then we've got a vent. So then if we head towards the bow, this is where we came out of. What's this? Ah, okay, same on the other side. So access to the hydrogen tanks. Up here we have airlocks on either side with the economy style connector setup going on. Um, each one also has an air vent inside so it is a fully functioning airlock. Uh, and then we have the bridge. Lots of windows, big open space um, and then an excellent view of the front of the ship. So yeah, this is a, a very, very solid entry. Looks amazing. Um, I like the, well I love the drones to be fair. Uh, not mining drones, just the little miners. Um, and overall, the, the, the style, as mentioned, is very reminiscent of TFK. So this is something that I could very easily see uh, being built within the universe. So I've got a little bit of storage back here as well. So yeah, that's the Emergence. Very, very good looking ship. I have to say, this is a very strong contender. Um, I'm just going to remove it for performance reasons. Next, we have the Ceramics Igniter by CJ Plays and Pickle NL. So, if we bring this up, 
I've spelt it wrong. Um, the sleek dorsal side of the MB119 Ceramics Igniter allows for a reduced drag coefficient to counterbalance the large underhanging underside of the ship, making enough room to fit all the necessary components and to complete the requirements set by the first colony. The factions didn't work too closely on designing the ship, as the Velo shipyards are known to build compact quality ships that are greatly efficient for production schemes, so the first colony had little concern for assisting with the design. Fellow shipyards decided to use the ships as a marketing scheme with their freedom form. The first colony given the ship a bold yet simple silhouette so onlookers could tell that it was clearly a Velo shipyards design. The Velo shipyards greatly needed this boost of marketing as it was still a lesser known company compared to others that overpopulate the systems. Fantastic. So let's have a little look around. First of all, it's obviously like a flying wing design. Looks very, I guess, Major John-esque. If I, if I had to say. Um, we have a couple of underslung mining ships here. Um, so these look really, really nice. I believe these are actually drones to be fair. Yep, they are. Got one on either side. Got a little bit of point defence scattered across the ship. No sort of heavy capital ship weaponry. It's more just, I guess, of a deterrence against hydrogen men. Um, at the aft here, we have a welding drone. And then this looks like a cargo drone. So you have a cargo drone, welding drone, and mining drone. So this thing can sort of, as described, take care of itself, offload its payloads, um, and support ships if needed. Um, was that camouflage I just saw? Wow. Didn't think that could be used on a ship. Maybe it's not a camouflage, actually. Um, anyway, awesome hangar greeble back here. This looks really nice. Nice lighting setup. You've got a clamp here as well, so you could lock other bits and bobs down in here. Just show you some of the greeble. You can even cling to the wall like Spider-Man if you want to. Do, 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 do. Oh, come back down now. Stop stop horsing around. Head through the airlock. We've got a vent, light set up, um, and then we've got doors leading straight into a passageway. If we head up here, have another rare vent, and this is just a lot of passageways. We want you got a little crew cabin here. I'm guessing it's the same on the other side, but we will check. Um, and then we head up into the CIC slash bridge. Oh, it's a hologram. Got a helm. A few control seats going on back here. A little bit of greeble. Looks like a flight crew of four. So if we head back down, if I can get my fat ass through the passageway. We'll head aft once again. Up here, we have what looks like more living quarters, got a few beds, we've got a kitchenette, couch, bit of a, a recreational area, um, and then this leads you back into the same passageway. Go across here, we've got even more living space, this is basically just to accommodate the crew. And then we head back down, and I get, well, we'll go, go forward first. Got some more beds. And then this puts us back up here. Let's check out the other side. Ah, it's just a toilet. Cool. So it's a very compact interior. Um, but it's got everything you need in terms of, I guess, livable space. Um, you've got a refinery. You've got two large assemblers. And you've got plenty of O2 generators. So this thing is fully self-sufficient. Awesome. Very nice, sleek design. This would be good for, you know, just a couple players, I guess, who just want to fly around for a bit and collect some ores. Looks really cool. Good justification for lack of TFK style. Again, not needed, but well-written law. Um, and then, obviously, the underslug drones look awesome as well. So, yeah, that's the Ceramics Igniter by CJ Plays and Pickle NL. Strong work. Let's take a look at the next entries. So next up we have the Asterope by Bolt9. So I'll just bring this up. The Asterope Prospecting Barge, the product of the first colony outsourcing their mining operations to defence contractors such as Axtel in order to conceptualise new technologies in the mining industry. Axtel took the traditional mining barge and applied a small spread of defence budget all over it. 
Utilising modernised hangar technologies such as holographic landing assists, typically seen on Navy supercarriers to provide your underpaid and underqualified employees an easy parallel dock. Axtell also reached into the secret pockets of their autonomous research facilities, taking the guts of a Predator drone and taping them to a cargo container. You can now extend the deployment time of your manned miners. Simply activate the timer release mechanism and within your chosen amount of time, cargo drones should dock to the back of your miner, take out all the precious minerals you mined and return back to the barge. Wow. The Astrope is also equipped with light enough armament to scare your average East African fisherman, so you'll never have to worry about... <laughs> oh my god. Why is everyone so based? The bottomless supply of government funding also allowed Axtell to build to equip the asteroid with six top-of-the-range refining units, all strategically overloaded with experimental speed or yield upgrades. The barge comes equipped with one drone-assisted AXT mining vessel. Unfortunately, budgets ran short due to a lack of backing from the TFK. Something was mentioned about overambition. Due to this, a second mine has been supplied. However, it was picked from the parts bin. This is a solid bit of lore. Um, and then you've got a how-to-use section. Designed by Bolt. Really, really robust description, lore, and thought put bit into this ship, which we like to see. This does look military, it has to be said. Um, <laughs> so I guess that's reflected in its armaments. So we actually have an assault cannon up here, which is, I think, the biggest piece of weaponry we've seen so far. We've got various subgrids going on here to give that sort of greeble antenna look. Uh, we've got searchlights underneath. Just trying to see if there's any other sort of armaments. Flying on a hybrid hybrid propulsion system I'm using my words today it's got a little target reticle there various flashing lights uh, and we do have interior turrets dotted around as well so indeed enough to just scare off the SPRT but not too much got a big rear landing pad and um, we've got a big front landing area as well uh, so we've got a state of the art mining ship which I guess is this one and then I'm guessing this is the cargo resupply drone and this is the one that was built with spare parts if I had to guess <laughs> it's a really cool bit of lore though it also has guns on it so I guess you could use them as fighters if you absolutely had to um, big rear door as well to get out and it has to be said, this is one hell of a hangar space. I mean, we've got multiple levels up here. We've got boatloads of storage for just about everything you need. We've got visibility for the refineries. Loads of machinery along the walls and ceiling. Very nice use of the catwalk, blast door blocks and lighting. Big spaces for hangar pads. You've got a little bit of a glass section up here as well. So you can pretty much dock whatever you want to in here. Um, I really like the lore about this, actually. It's very, very cool. Well, it's got a bit of rust on that. Very cool bit of lore that they couldn't afford the second ship, so they just sort of pushed it together with scraps. Um, and then obviously, this drone can retrieve ore from these ships, which is also very nice. Various storage shelves and other bits and bobs going on over there. Um, I don't believe there's any way into the actual interior of the ship from the hangar. I believe it's a separate thing. So let's go and see if we can find interior. Big landing pad at the rear as well. Let's head in through the bridge uh, airlock here. Got a survival kit, heat vent, um, and then you've got a bit of a viewing port up here. And this is now the bridge. So you've got a few panels for information. You've got the flight seat, well designed interior and you've also got the launch controls at the back for the landing pad and the hangar. Sweet! So if we come out and come along here. Ah, this takes us straight into the uh, the hangar area actually. Okay. So do we have any more interior space? That is the question. I don't think we do. I think the bulk of this ship is actually just the uh, the hangar. I don't think there's any sort of living quarters as such. But we'll have a quick mooch. Yeah, that takes you back down there. Got a bit of a walkway up here with controls dotted around, which is nice. 
But in terms of living quarters, I don't think there's any more interior space on this thing. I don't want to miss it. But I don't think there is. I'm going to assume not. Apologies if I missed it. But regardless, this is one hell of a good looking ship. Like, you know, that has to be said. Um, it looks awesome. Very nice sort of law uh, and very robust thought that's been put into this ship. Decent armament. We've got the mining drones, the sort of offloading drone as well. Awesome hangar. This is like one of the coolest hangars I've seen, to be honest with you, just in general. Um, very, very good attention to detail. And overall, it's just a very, very strong entry. Um, obviously, this would be pretty expensive to produce, but, you know, it can take care of itself and does look pretty fearsome, sort of standard naval look so some some serious effort has been put into this and i uh, i do appreciate that this obviously took a lot of time to make um but yeah that's the astro by bolt 9 on to the next one next up we have the porter tour the poor tighter i don't know how you say it by phd composer Designed and built at the Europa shipyards the ship mainly relies on hydrogen for propulsion given its operational area being one of many support carrier vessels, the Portator carries a large amount of cargo capacity and an assortment of production capability. This, in turn, makes her well suited for mining operations. She can pull 2.89 Gs while dry loaded. She currently serves the TAR 3rd Fleet. Through being a civilian class vessel, the Portator does not carry an assortment of armaments. This was one of many requirements of the TAR Navy. She does house three jump drives to provide adequate jump range when loaded and is equipped with a standard clang motor. The standard craft complement loadout is four drone miners, one tug and one constructor along with three shipping containers. Nice. So a pretty short description there. Um, gives us a good overview of the ship. As discussed we have the... Oh we've got emojis on them. We've got the miners up top with like a wooden, wooden style deck. Overall, it's a really nice shape, very compact ship as well. Um, we do have a pretty tasty armament. We've got three assault cannons. We've got an artillery gun, so this now takes the cake, um, along with some Gatlin turrets as well. We've got a support sort of welder and grinding drone on the side here. Um, we've got some more point defense at the rear. And then a, hologram a holographic sort of flag, I guess you, you could call it. Um, and then we've got the... I think these are detachable cargo containers. Yeah, they are. So you can, I guess, fill those up, offload them, and uh, take them somewhere else, or just drop them off. We've got piston clamps at the rear. Nice. Big thruster array, flying on hybrid, ion, and hydrogen. Got a quad nacelle set up going on as well. Nice round bow. Um, and I like the little fin designs as well. I've got the port and starboard lights. Very nice. Let's head inside. No faction found. So, heading into the bridge. Again, you've got great visibility over the miners. You've got some information about cargo storage and output energy. Um, got a bit of greeble going on on top there as well. Nice wooden decking. So, it makes it feel a bit more high-end, I suppose. Drop down here. We've got a bit of a CIC with a hologram of the ship, so you can have a little look around. We've got a few servers going on, and then we've got passageways down to the aft section. Crew quarters, we've got a fish tank, so you've got fresh meat if you get hungry. Uh, we've got a little kitchenette back here, a bar, a big window, and a little bit of a recreation area. Uh, I'm going to pretend I didn't see that. We've got a toilet, shower, and then we've got a passageway down the port side, where we've got three cryo tubes. We've also got the survival kit here as well. And it looks like that's probably the interior. We've got a sort of a V6 reactor setup going on. And that nice wooden ceiling. I like the, the wood. You don't really see that very often. But I guess... I mean, I don't know how it would fare in space. But it looks cool. And sort of as mentioned, it gives it that, I guess, higher quality feel. Looks more like a, uh, a newer design. Very nice shape. Very nice greeble. Not too heavy on the greeble, but just enough to make it look interesting to the eyes um, but it is overall it's just a very clean build 
a very clean uh, sort of mining barge which has everything that you need to sustain itself as well. So yeah, solid entry. That's the, the portal tour, however you say it, by PhD Composer. On to the next one! First up, we have the Emplacement slash Shepherd class by Flatulent Moth. So this is the Shepherd class tug, and then you've got the Emplacement class platforms here as well. So it's, it's a bit of a one in two, but I guess they work together. Uh, developed shortly after TFK's escape from Luna, the TFK required a new method of obtaining materials since they could no longer mine Luna's surface. As a response, the TFK quickly developed a mining barge system that could be produced with as few new technologies and investments. The result of this was the emplacement class barges. These small stations are designed to move from asteroid to asteroid, mining them for their resources. God, what's going on? For mining, they often make use of a pair of modified Surveyor Mark 1B mining ships that allow for ventral docking rather than rear docking. Although support ship complements can be anywhere between one and three mining ships of varying types, each emplacement also have been seen carrying ore docking with small cargo ships with, which often uses the side docking point to ferry ores off station. The emplacement also comes with clamping feet, allowing them to grab onto asteroids, and a full complement of production and power generation. Additionally, fearing com commerce raiding attacks from LKF and pirates, a pair of Gatling guns was installed on the station for defence. Despite these advantages, to keep production costs down, the emplacement lacks a jump drive. Instead, it was decided during the design process to ship them in bulk on the back of the Shepherd class tugs, a pre-existing civil ship intended for bulk carrying freight barges and defensive platforms. This allows the TFK to streamline production of emplacements, allowing more resources for other projects. Again, excellent knowledge of the law. And this is very reminiscent of a Lancer class LKF frigate, actually, this bridge. Um, so it does look like a Trinity ship. Um, interesting concept. So we've got these platforms which are deployed. I guess they can be docked along this tug. Looks like it, it can carry an extra couple of them there. Um, and then these are fully self-sufficient and can mooch about under their own power. They've got very little in terms of thrust, so they're not going to be quick, but that's exactly what they are, a barge. Then you've got the Surveyor class, which I believe was introduced with the Gladiator class uh, cruiser. Um, and this is just a very simple hydrogen powered uh, ship and they've got a drill on it. So it can basically do a little bit of mining, but as mentioned in the description, you can also attach further mining ships um, to help out with its operations. So we do have the Gatling guns on either side, flies on all ion and has solar power. So very nice self-sufficient little ship up here we've got a tiny little bridge a nice little walkway here this looks awesome nice landing pad design got a few flashing lights um, and then let's try and head inside here so we've got a passageway oh that's actually for thrusters uh, we've got a door at the rear here so heading inside and it looks like this is pretty much it I'm guessing so you've got a little air vent so you do have oxygen you've got the helm and then you can walk around on the actual barge itself. So yeah, I could definitely see these being deployed. You know, you deploy a few of these, you clamp them to the asteroid, um, you mine the asteroid, and then ships will come and take... Ah, you've actually got... Ah, okay, okay. So on the opposite side, you also have another mining drone. That is very close right there. Wow. That's actually touching. Uh, but fair enough, he has docked them together. Um, on the underside, you actually have more of a living space. Okay, this makes sense. So down here, you've actually got the crew quarters for the mining ships. You've got a medical room, a bit of a living area. Nice little use of the, uh, the structural blocks there. You've got a toilet and a shower. You've got a couch, a few windows. So these are actually livable platforms as well, which is nice to see. I was fearing it was just the top. You've got large cargo containers at the back here, along with more thrusters. And then you've also got, well, I guess that's the next one actually. So there you go, those are the, the self-sufficient emplacement pads. Um, let's take a quick look at the Shepherd class. So here's the entrance. Little airlock, we've got an armory, a vent. And then we come into the bridge here. So, big bridge. Awesome viewing angles here, you can see pretty much everything you need to see. Got a few more control stations dotted around. 
and then we can head back in here into crew quarters and we've also got the medical room looks like this big medical room the new one is very popular everyone seems to be using it i've not actually used it yet uh, on any of my builds and then we've got another airlock on the opposite side as well so very very cool concept um very interesting design paid attention to the lore this is a, a unique one, but I can see it working very well, to be fair, as well. So, very interesting and, uh, and cool design from Flatulent Moth there. On to the next one. We have the Cicada class by Luna Tricky. So, let's pull up the description. The Cicada is a ship built around low cost and modularity. Its first version was a freighter with 10 large cargo containers to serve as a cargo hauler and storage unit on a survival server around mid-2022. Since then, many models have been made which also include a tanker, a refinery and an assembler, a jumper and multi-role, a bit of everything obviously, presented here in this blueprint. I'm finally publishing this version for a competition on the LKF Colony Discord, blah blah blah, blah. hope you enjoy it. Awesome! So we've got a bit of a multi-role ship going on here, um, it's not going to be doing any of the mining itself. Um, obviously up top here you've got plenty of space to dock mining ships so you pull up at an asteroid deploy them and you mind this was built in a survival server obviously so I guess it's sort of survival focused um, in terms of defense we've got a few interior turrets on the front um, let's have a little look we've got a safe zone generator down there actually uh, and then a few more interior turrets on the aft along with a very spiky nose or well, spiky ass I guess um, a lot of jump drives, so you can definitely get around with this thing. Uh, you've got, again, those four connection ports. Um, and I don't think it's got any other connectors on it. More jump drives in the rear. Oh, you've got the connectors on either side, actually, the economy style. Let's head inside. So we've got a very compact airlock here. We can go forward or aft. We head backwards. We've got living quarters. So we've got a toilet, we've got a couple beds, you can access the jump drives, um, and then we can head back into the airlock, where we've got an armory, a bit of a window for some greeble, um, and then we can head outside. So how do we get into the bridge? That is, is a question. Maybe it's through a ladder. Ah, we go forward. Okay, so we've got the survival kit, we've got storage access, we've got the big rear window, sort of a, again, Sort of a sitting lounging area for people. We've got a contract block, we've got a little lab, um, and then you've got the bridge up front as well. Let's see what we've got here. Got refineries, got assemblers, got O2 gens. So you get everything you need for a self sufficient mining barge. You've also got a safe zone block, which uh, we don't see too much of. Oh, I haven't seen any of actually. It's fully hydrogen powered. And it has just enough defense to ward off a few hydrogen men. And obviously, like I said, this would be for carrying its own uh, mining ships, which it doesn't come with, but you could very easily fit um, your own designs onto the top there. So, very nice work, strong entry. Um, thank you very much, Luna Tricky. Next up, we have the Royal Mist by Ben Oct. The Royal Mint, sorry, the Royal Mint by Ben Oct. Um, let's have a little look at the lore. With the first miner's departure, so left the Pertimites only easy access to the fiat currencies of Earth. In the lawless times that followed, rare, lustrous, and unalloyed platinum took their place. The first of this new species came from meteorites under the sand, dredged up by warlords, legions of soldiers, servants, and sudras. This order persisted until the wild success of Scrap Rabbit. <laughs> which brought from the unknown enough ore to ignite a space race. In barely two decades, mining operations evolved from ramshackle rockets and hand drills to the Royal Mint, I can't say that, from which most platinum on Pertum can trace its lineage. Built at the behest of the Queen of the Wastes and heavily influenced by her fascination with Earth, the vessel was to be the first inhabited Pertamite craft to be incapable of returning to the surface. From this came the name and... Epit epithet of its minor after the fallen lord of vultures this is like some dune law level stuff here um very interesting description i'm sure there's a bit of bit more backstory behind this jata yuvan 
Jata, why can't people just call it like the bucket or the hammer or the orange? I I can't say these names, guys. Come on, give me a break. <laughs> give me a break. This thing looks fucking awesome, though. Look at the front of it here. Definitely looks like a per time creation. So obviously we've got lots of rust. We've got the name that shall not be spoken down the port and starboard side of the craft. Very, very detailed greeble here, it has to be said. Uh, we've got a lot of um, subgrids going on as well. So this is the actual mining vessel we've got up here. It's got these two big arms either side with drills on them, which is just awesome. Um, so this is like a self-sufficient craft within itself. And then you've also got the big crane arm here. Which again is really cool. You've got a little operation sensor in here. Let's see if we can control this thing. There you go. That's how you can control the crane. You can open up the grapple. Close the grapple. Wow. Very cool. Very cool. We've got more of the Pertam styling across the top. We've got a very small eight barreled auto cannon turret here, but that is like something you, you, you don't want to mess with as a serious weapon. Uh, you've got a few interior turrets scattered around as we've seen previously. We've got large cargo containers and refineries back here. All hydrogen powered. We've got large industrial hydrogen thrusters. A Gatling gun up top. And overall, it just looks like one of those. It looks a bit like those, uh, ah, uh, those pirate ships, the the Reavers. Looks a bit like one of those ships. Got a big satellite dish up top as well. We've got a few wheels around as well, which just I guess add to the uh, the visuals of the craft. With large cargo containers lining either side of the ship. Let's see if we can head inside now. Where would the doors be? Here we go. Nice lighting. So, heading inside, immediately through the airlock, we've got access to the engine room, where we indeed do have engines. Again, nice work with the Greeble. Heading further back, we've got a bit of a, I guess, an engineering section. You've got a few lockers, you can access the pipes, um, and then we can head up to the bridge. Make our way up the shaft. Got a little control section where you can see an outline of the mining ship there. We've got a door which leads out back. You can actually go up top here. Airlock mechanism. Love the use of the signs. Awesome addition to the game. Uh, and then we go forward and we have access to the bridge. So we've got the control seat, we've got a flight seat back there. So then we'll head back down. Very slowly. Awesome attention to detail in the interior. We've got the recreation room, looks like they're watching the show that shall not be named. Um, we've got viewport, beds, we've got a few heat vents. I've not seen, uh, that's a good use of them actually, like heaters. To, to warm the interior. We've got a toilet and a shower combo. Um, and then we've got an armory up here as well. A vent and a couch. Got a few desks. We've got a message sending terminal. Head into here, we've got cryo chambers. With some really sweet detail going on here. Look at this. It's all icy and he's got them set up in like a tri... A tri sort of shape. A triangle. Use of the new thrusters there to make it look like it's cooling them down as well. Got a lab, a few plants, a couple more beds as well. It's like the pipes are frozen up as well. We got a little corridor with a staircase leading up to the airlock and then the bridge section. Um, and then if we go forward through here, I believe this takes us outside. Yep, this takes us to the big bay for the mining ship. This is awesome, look at this. You've got a massive walkway here. Where you can lock down the mining ship. Refuel her. Got lots of storage for components and parts to keep this thing tip top. Um, and then you've got access to the cockpit there for the ship. 
and you want to take her out for a spin. It's got an oxygen generator there. Let's head back inside here. Got a bit more Greeble going on. Docking summary. Got a shelving unit as well and a survival kit outside. Let's see what else we have on the interior here. That's the infirmary. Um, and then we can head up the stairs here. That's another airlock. Nice atmosphere with the lighting. And then we've got maintenance. So we've got a turret controller. And then we've got a little overview of the docked mining ship. And a few more of the turret controllers as well. Awesome. So this is, uh, I think, one of the most lore-heavy ships we've seen. Um, I can definitely feel like there's a bit of a story from, from behind this thing. Um, and the creator's gone into pretty serious detail with the lore. The actual ship itself is absolutely beautiful. Some serious time and effort, again, has gone into this one, so I really appreciate that. All of the Greeble looks absolutely incredible. really does give that feel of, I guess, a Pertam-esque ship that's been rusted and, and wore down and now resides in space. Um, and then the crane is obviously awesome, really like that, as well as the, the separate mining ship we've got here. Very, very strong work. Thank you very much, Binocht. That was the Royal Mint. On to the next one. Next up, we have the HMB 1870 Gneiss by Indy113. I don't know if that's supposed to be silent or what have you, but there you go. Commonly used in conjunction with the LMC-187, the Gneiss was favoured by many miners due to its pure functionality-oriented design, committing as much space as possible to cargo and refining facilities with accommodations for only one crew. It was common for miners to bring a separate vessel dedicated to fragment pilots and Gneiss hangar crew. Uh, we also have, I believe, the, the, the mining ship that comes with this, so I'll just go quickly grab that. So here's the fragment class mining vessel as well. Very nice Greeble, always expected of Indy. We've got extendable landing gear on the sides. We've got sort of drum looking storage units. And then obviously we've got the drills on the front. Again, very Indy-esque, we have 17,300,000 subgrids on each of these crafts, so, I mean, you know, that's to be expected. Interesting cockpit design here, I know a few people have been using this more recently, uh, as I guess, it does look pretty cool. I wish we could get, like, a variant of this, let's see if we've got a little description here. Commonly, con commonly used in conjunction with the HMB 1870, fragments were the backbone of any mining operation. Boasting a sizable fuel tank, fragments were sent to the edges of mining zones with no trouble and slipped into the hard-to-reach places in hopes of retrieving miners' fortune. Despite their high fuel capacity, a quick acceleration speed, fragments still make up 1.2% of wreckages found in the galaxy, a testament to how far-reaching and easily accessible the crafts were. Sweet! So... Let's have a look at the Gneiss. Up front we have a big drill arm uh, accompanied by several thousand spotlights. Um, we also have, uh, I guess that's a hinge there. It doesn't look like there's any piston action going on. So I don't think you can extend it. Um, we've got fuel tanks on the side. Very nice greeble all around. Got a big rear hydrogen thruster array. Again, with like the similar fins that you've seen on the mining ship as well. We got some more subgrids. Nice detail on the top. Got a little antenna array going on. More hydrogen fuel storage. Nice use of colours as well. It's got a very strong colour palette. Then you've got the the cockpit over here. Um, let's just figure. Let's see if I can figure out how to get inside this thing. That was easy. So you can open up the sides here. We've got these subgrid doors. And then you've got this out front as well. Where you can see the, the big drill arm. That also flips the doors up. Very nice. Um, and then we can head up into the ship. So, up here we've got an airlock. We've got a few armories. A window so you can see the ladder passage. Got a conveyor pipe going on up there. Air vents, and then we come into like the living quarters here. So you've got a toilet, you've got a bed, 
desk. Again, this was for, for one dude. Big hangar in the back. Got two connector points. You've got one of those, uh, the new warfare reactors, which I've actually not seen on a ship before, uh, to my knowledge. So that looks really cool. Wow. I mean, you've got to give him style points. <laughs> that was satisfying. I've got to press that again. The way it shorts. That might be one of the best hangar doors I've ever seen. I mean, that is seriously good. You've got a couple of passenger seats here. You've got a little place to wipe your feet as well. Obviously, we've got a full subgrid <laughs> going on here, but uh, I can't. I can't lie. That is that is really really cool, um, and it's built into the ship in a way that that works quite well. Got a big collector area up here, so you can mine and then hoover up all of the um, all of the stone. You've got a gravity generator there. You can hoover up all the stone into the collectors. Which you don't actually see too often. I mean, you used to see it a lot back in day when the connectors first came out, but you don't tend to see it, or I've at least not seen it very often since. It sort of just disappeared that practice. And there you go. Beautiful hangar area. Very nicely greebled. Um, and then we can head up these ladders. We've got a passageway here. Heading forward, you've got access to see the collector room there. We actually go in. Got a projector block. Uh, this is actually for, like, it shows you the gravity range, I suppose. I'll, I'll show you in a minute. Um, we've got the hangar doors, and then obviously the gravity generator to uh, pull all the ore in. Let me just see if I can demonstrate here. Uh, wait, what am I doing? There you go. So you can drill out a load of ore, and then that shows you the, uh, the range for you to then go and scoop it up. Wow. Solid work. Really good looking ship. Love the subgrids. Uh, nice bit of lore. And overall, I mean, the, the, the Gnice just looks really, really nice. It's a good looking ship. Um, great functionality as well. Probably be quite difficult to produce, to be honest with you. But, I mean, you know, style points, I suppose. You've just got to go for them. These arms look awesome. Yeah. Really great work, Indy. Um, I'm going to go and have a little mooch and I'm going to come back to you with the winners. Obviously there are prizes so I'm going to announce them in this video. Um, all winners I'll contact you on Discord via DM so get back to me if you want your prize. If you don't want your prize then uh, I guess the, you can ignore me. <laughs> anyway, thanks very much to all of the contestants so far and I'll be back shortly with the winners. And in third place we have the Australis by Mystic. Um, really, really impressed with this one. I think, obviously, visually, it looks stunning. It's very much one of those, like, cobbled together, I guess, super gremlin vibes, almost, um, of an industrial mining barge. Love the drones. This is probably my favourite thing about the ship, is just this massive array of drones that you can deploy. Um, this was pretty much what I pictured people would be doing when I sort of set this challenge, so it's really cool to see that come to fruition. Um, and then obviously the the drone printer as well was another big selling point. You've got the detachable uh, large cargo modules, a very clean, nice interior as well, a good visibility from the bridge, 
and a little bit of point defense. The reason it's not any higher is there's no immediate ways. I mean, it has the um, it has the tug in here. And if we open this up real quick, we have the tug in here, but there's no immediate ways to repair the ship. Um, so obviously they were based on being able to defend themselves, fully sustain themselves, and repair and upgrade themselves. So this can build more drones, um, but the ship itself, um, you'd need something else to repair those. Um, I guess you could do it with a hand welder, but yeah, uh, that, that's the reason it's not any higher. Um, also, it is a bit more on the difficult side to get built, but definitely a strong contender and a worthy number three spot. Um, on to the second the second place, second place. <laughs> second place, we have the Portator by PhD Composer. Uh, I think you say it like that anyway. Uh, super sleek, simple, streamlined design. Um, we've got excellent defense capabilities with plenty of heavy hitting weaponry, uh, including the artillery gun down there as well. So this thing can definitely take care of itself. I dare say it'd even be uh, decent at throwing hands with other capital ships. Or large grid ships I should say so yeah it's got the four mining drones on top which again serve the purpose of obviously dredging asteroids um, and then we also have the utility ship so this thing can it can repair itself it can I guess take in scrap it finds floating around and use it for resources it can make its own components it has full refinery assembler and O2 generation systems um, and then it can feed those to the utility craft and I guess weld it straight onto the ship from there. Um, super sleek design, it looks really good. Um, it's just a nice, simple, fairly easy to build ship. Um, so yeah, I'm quite happy with this one and I think it's a very strong entry at number two. So, let's go and see who the winner is. The winner of the Mining Barge Challenge is... Allied Armour with the Scoria class. Um, this was an extremely difficult decision to make. Um, so many of these ships were absolutely fantastic, so big thank you to everyone who entered the challenge. Basically, what it came down to is who fit the best criteria, um, and that's it, it can be quite subjective, so it was very difficult to, to come up with a winner. But obviously, you've got defending yourself, you've got uh, sustaining yourself, and then you've got to be mining the asteroids as well as repairing and upgrading yourself. So the reason I've picked Allied Armour for the winner here is because the Scoria is a good ship on its own, but it's also quite modular in the way that he's included extra hot, I uh, could be a she to be fair, that they've included, <laughs> they've included uh, hard points where you can upgrade the ship's weaponry. It comes preloaded with two miners, which can be converted to four miners or more. Um, and then we've also got the utility craft, which can take care of itself. Uh, a great level of thought has been put into the Greeble detailing on the large ship as well as the small ships as well. So I just wanted to, I guess, acknowledge that because these miners look absolutely fantastic, um, as does the utility ship up here. Uh, as does the entire Scoria class herself. She looks gorgeous. Um, and I like the, the dark solar panels on the top. We've got Omega's uh, standard sort of ring. Um, obviously, this is ONRC inspired. The underslung bridge. Nice little compact interior. And then you've got all the gubbins you need to sustain yourself. I can very easily see this thing plugging nicely into a ship. Uh, into a fleet, sorry. Um, and yeah, I just overall, I think this is one of those designs that just meshes and blends well together. Um, so yeah. Well done, Allied Armour. All the winners, I will be in your DMs. Um, not for the first time, but I will be in your DMs this time to congratulate you on winning and asking for your friend code so I can grab you on Steam and send you the prizes. Um, if you guys want to check out all these ships, they will be in the description below. Go and show the creators some love because, like I said, all the ships in this challenge were absolutely phenomenal, so it was not uh, an easy decision uh, I've been ponder on it, pondering on it for a few days, I should say, um, about who to who to give the dub to. But yeah, go and check them out in the comment section, in the description, sorry. Uh, give them some love. 
And if you guys want to be involved in more community challenges in the future, join the Discord server, link will be in the description. And as always, take care of your faces, everybody.